It's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be costly. But I am gonna kill my own creation. Let's blow this team the hell up. <laughs> they won a Super Bowl. And now it's time to let these guys go to different teams, get the big money contracts elsewhere. Because we don't have the salary cap space to keep all of these guys here anyway. Like, this, this is it. <laughs> like, they, we might be able to keep some of them. But for the most part, it makes sense to move on. We already have some draft picks this year, and it's about to get goddamn crazy. Uh, the best way, I would say, right now... I mean, moving further draft picks from this year might not be the worst option, just to free up more space, but... We'll see what happens. The first man to go is the bajillion dollar man, Dennis frickin' Payne. I didn't think we'd get an X-Factor quarterback. He was finally the guy. Again, he is only 26 years old, but he doesn't want to stay. And the price it would cost to keep him cripples the rest of the team to the point where I probably won't be able to get the supporting cast around him to win with them. It just doesn't make sense to keep him. Him wanting to leave and wanting as much money as he does in the first place is brutal. So we are going to look to trade him. I do want to see uh, shits and gigs. How many picks can I also pair with him? Apparently all of them. So there's Alan Riddle. Again, the Bills are willing to offer two firsts. The Bucks are willing to... Oh my god. <laughs> So two, okay, okay, let's mark down what we have here. So the Bills are offering a star corner and two firsts, which is nuts. The Bucks are offering a superstar left guard and a first. Skaggs, there's two firsts. It's about even with the Bills. Stephen Ford, that's not worth it at all. Keyshawn Adams. Right now, we're looking for three firsts or a better than superstar player. There was the Raiders deal where they were offering two firsts and a star QB that we could train up. But then there was the Seahawks with the X-Factor defensive tackle and two first round picks. I know they're a division rival. It's a fucking no-brainer. Because trading for the Colts pick doesn't make sense because he is going to make them better and they probably won't finish in last. That deal for the Seahawks. And especially, too, if he does not sign with Seattle, then we fucking fleeced him. We take an X-Factor DT at 22 years old. Two first-round picks. This year and next. And if Dennis leaves them... My God. Barg, think of the 48 months on the primer. I think we have our deal. I think we do. Again, dangerous to deal to a division rival, a 26-year-old quarterback, but we already looked at Seattle. Their core is older. Even if he goes there, they won't be dominant for too long without getting brutalized money-wise by what he is going to want on a new contract. It makes all the sense in the world to take the risk here and get Sheldon Steele in return. Second year pro, Sheldon Steele. Was he rookie of the year last year? He's got two years left and he'd stay. And he'd stay. I mean, franchise quarterback depending. He was the 11th overall pick. Monstrous. Like, the, uh, the upside of this guy is insane. So if I take out that 7th and say... Uh-oh. That's going to reset the trade, isn't it? Fuck me. All right. Well, I could have just hit the Y button again. That Seattle deal is the one, man. That is the one. I mean, there is also an argument to say, hey, if you were to pair him with Forrest Harris, but... Forrest Harris can be dealt 
in a different deal. I mean, yeah, Taylor Hampton's there. I mean, Taylor Hampton in the first isn't that bad, but the Bucks were offering that anyway. <laughs> Kyle Pitts, but he's 31. Arthur Lucas, but he's 28. And then Calvin Weber's 28, too. All right. Dennis Payne's going to be a Seahawk for at least the rest of this season. It's a hell of a song, Crash. This is, this is fucking madness. Dennis Payne and a bunch of picks to free up space. For Sheldon Steele, two firsts. And then we're going to see if we can get a little bit more out of those later picks. What about two-thirds? Seattle, what do you think? Blockbuster for Dennis Payne? It's close. Looks like we can get a third instead of a seventh. Dennis Payne, three-sixths and two-fifths. For Sheldon Steele, two-firsts, a third and a fifth. Oof. Take out the fifth, make it a seventh, and then we still at least get a third. We'll take that seventh way down the road. Okay, just the third. That's still a hell of a deal. Is it a done deal? <laughs> All right, let's go with a fourth and a seventh then instead of a third. That's not that bad. And again, we'll take it way down the road. That's fine by me. We've already committed to using draft picks from this offer elsewhere. What the fuck are you on? Just give me the fourth then. Mother. Okay. Let's just do the freaking deal as they offered it. It's fine. Dennis Payne. Thank you for a Super Bowl. But it would cripple this team to keep you. Have fun in Seattle. A mammoth. Mammoth trade. It did not go through. Why? My guess is still too many picks this year. Even though we're trading away picks, that's my guess. Is it still probably too many picks? It showed them as having the cap. I don't see why it would go through if they couldn't. Dennis doesn't make that much this year. Uh, so if we do this swap of these picks, we could pick up like a third and a sixth. Let's do this swap of draft picks. Third and a fifth was on the board there. Can anybody top that? Seattle can, but we don't want to do a deal with them yet. Let's take the third and the fifth from San Fran. Clear out those draft picks and then try it again. Let's try it again. And again, we'll give up a lot of these mid picks because we're going to be, whoops, one too many. We're going to be trading down again anyway once we get to the actual draft. We won't be able to make all the, the picks that we're going to have. The Seattle still offer a similar deal. Uh, they are now off the board. That's not good. Take a couple of them off of there. All right, Seattle, we're not fucking around here, champ. We're not fucking around. We're making that deal. Whether you fucking want to or not at this point, we're making that deal. It's a first this year, a first next year, and that friggin' defensive tackle. There he is. I didn't expect him to have somebody better. You're doing this deal. You are. Now it's saying it would put us over the cap. How? I guess because the stock value of the other. Okay. Uh, what if we trade you Brad Shepard as well? I probably won't be allowed because I'd have too few players in a given position. Uh, what if I give you Trajan McDaniels? Is that enough? This game is so full of shit. We've committed to using these draft picks elsewhere. The fuck does that mean? It's not a live trade deadline. What the hell? Ivory, thank you for the 59. I'm so confused. 
I'm so confused as to why this deal won't go through now. Now they're claiming that the, the picks are stocked up for a different trade. You mean the trade that you already offered me that I accepted that didn't go through for some goddamn reason? That one? I think you're talking about that one. You know, the friggin' trade you offered me a minute ago. You're giving me this frickin' trade. You are. You're giving me this trade. Not for Jeremiah Bruce. I want that young superstar DT, Sheldon Steele, who you offered me before. This trade is going through. I don't care. This deal is going through. You offered me this deal. You're not walking away from the table now. Ivory, too expensive. Doesn't want to stay. Team is mid. This isn't going to cut it. I am going to slash your tires. Fine. Have a fifth round pick. Okay, how about the first the year after? Dennis Payne to the Seattle Seahawks along with Trajan McDaniels and a fifth round pick this year for Sheldon Steele, their first this year and their first in 2035. The Dennis Payne era in Arizona is over and so is our Super Bowl uh, contention window because holy shit, that's a monstrous trade. But again, we had no choice for the reasons I explained. With that, with that, is there anything else that makes sense? Is there anything else that makes sense? Cameron Walton still got, I fucking love Cameron Walton. It would break my heart to trade him even more. Ugh. But it does make sense to trade him. Macklin's only 24. Bush is only 27. The receivers could stay. Lonnie Reed's 28. I mean, Forrest Harris is definitely the next one on the list to say, man, he's got to go. He doesn't want to stay. And the deal it would you know, take to keep him is insane. If we use a fifth. What would we get for Forrest Harris at this deadline? David Cologne, who's okay. Seymour's 26. He doesn't quite fit our window. Daniel Cordova's a decent young offensive lineman. 23 and a 76. Right now, I'm more looking at the players that are being tacked on. Guy's 29. Yeah, and there's the Rams offer. Why are you selling? Because we can't keep the team together money-wise. <whistles> All right, New Orleans. New Orleans out of nowhere. 84 superstar linebacker Damian Johnson with a third and two sevenths. New Orleans, you have yourselves a deal. That is a tremendous, tremendous offer. We'll see if it goes through. I don't know if it did. It doesn't even matter if Johnson's willing to resign for me. We could flip him. It didn't go through. <sighs> the fucking glitches with these goddamn contracts. Why? Why? Why is it offering it if they're not going to go through? Fuck me. It's just making this deadline a pain in the ass. And now New Orleans is offering somebody else. Fucking excuse me? No, you're not going to sit here and offer somebody else now. You showed me you're willing to trade this player. I want this player. Screw you and your husband. I want Damian Johnson. <laughs> 
I don't even need a, that good of a draft pick back. Just what the hell's the offer here? Not enough value. That's fine. But you showed me you're willing to trade this player, and I'm holding you to it. Give me him in a fifth for Forrest Harris. Thank you. Forrest, have fun in New Orleans. They're fucking terrible. Although they did just beat us, so what are you going to do? Blowing up the team, entering a rebuild. Maybe it factors in their cap penalty. Maybe. But at the same time, if it does that, you think it would recognize whether or not they can financially do the trade. Right? Goes both ways there. Right now, we are projected to have three first-round picks. Uh, Gilligan can stay. McPherson can stay. It's the last year of his deal, and he won't have too much value. At least I don't think. Will Gilligan have that much value? Nope. Nobody wants him. <laughs> or not Gilligan, but McPherson, excuse me. Um, at safety, Matthias Griffin. He did finally go up to star dev, but he's 28. He's got four years left. You don't have to immediately trade him, but... Uh, same for Derek Ridley, 29, but he does have another year left. Callahan, Flowers, they have some time left. Fowler's got some time left. We can trade Dan Malone now. He's willing to stay, but again, he's 29. And we just brought in his replacement. What is the value? Malone is willing to stay. Is there anything we can get for him? Four years left, cost a lot, and penalty. Oh, yeah, but we're also going to be shit. So we're willing to take on a lot in terms of penalty right now because it's not a big deal to us. If we're tearing this team down, like way down. All right, there is no phenomenal trade for Dan Malone. He could be somebody that stays, honestly. Like, there is this tight end from Chicago, Jackson McMillan, that we could maybe train up, but that's it. And the guy was 24 already? He was 23. Like, that's it. That's all we can get for Daniel Malone. Is maybe a tight end who will develop. And a fifth rounder. Is that worth it, or do we keep Dan Malone on as kind of a leader on this team? I mean, you look at how much Malone's making, but we did restructure his deal quite a bit. I feel like we can get a better a better tight end than that. I mean, he'd need a breakout moment. Is he a rookie? Not that he'd get rookie of the year. I have no idea who the hell's going to be even our, our quarterback for the rest of the season. Second-year guy. He's a blocking first option. I think we're going to keep Dan Malone around and be able to run a 3-4 if we, if we choose to. Again, not everybody has to go immediately either. But the guys on expiring contracts that we know are going to be stupid expensive. Those are the guys on the chopping block here. Which includes Michael Lucas. I doubt we have the freaking value to... Yeah, nobody fucking wants him. No surprise. Um, Chest. If we deal Chest Williams... It needs to be for a great offer because he has arguably been the face of this series. I feel like that would be more heartbreaking than trading the quarterback is if we dealt Chest Williams. Drew Sanders went X-Factor. Again, he was never really going to resign here. Jamie Fisher's 29. Bart Strickland, but he's 27. Stephen Ford's Okay. Stephen Ford is very similar to what Chest Williams was, but... God, if that guy was like three years younger. Even then, he's only 27. But at that point, you might as well just keep Chest. Uh, Demarius Holiday, another good middle linebacker. X-Factor tight end, but he's the same age. I... I think we're keeping our boy. I think he's the one that we can keep. There are some good young players, but there's nobody insane or, or younger that's an X factor. Like there was with the quarterback. I think we might be looking to keep chest around. Uh, Bryson Cook. Let me double check who wants to stay and who doesn't. 
for what has already been an absolutely absurd deadline day for us. Where we pretty much waved the white flag on the season and started getting rid of free agents that weren't going to stay. You make players and put them in the draft. I did not. So again, Chest is willing to stay. Jay Williams is willing to stay. So we do still have to check Williams, who's 31. He only wants a one-year deal, though. Cook is worth looking at. Malone actually doesn't want to stay anymore. I think because we traded the quarterback, we'd have to overpay him. Dalton's still willing to stay. Proctor's still willing to stay. We can still check Proctor. Beckett won't have value. Shepard won't have value. Okay. And then we get with, like, uh, Michael Lucas, Tyler Nash, but we know they won't have value. And a Marco Macklin's fifth-year option. Okay. Okay. Well, let's double-check our final few offers here. But, yeah, Chest will probably stay. I think he'll be the, the one guy at this stage that we overspend to keep. So I'll find this franchise. Welcome in, Immortal. We, uh, that's what we do around here. Outside of the occasional bit of, like, FIFA Pro Clubs or the NHL equivalent, we are a franchise channel. Welcome in. Um, you're just in time to watch us blow up a Super Bowl winning team. <laughs> the glory days are gone. If we were to trade Jay Williams, could we get anything good for him? Cheney's 29, so that's not amazing. Or else you see a double rebuild, right? Cody Seymour is certainly younger. Two lower picks. Robertson's not bad. And a third. We don't want Saucedo back. Dudley Rice. Derek Massey's a pretty good young linebacker. Trayvon Sharp. I was hoping to see like one clear-cut standout. Teddy Broyles isn't bad. Sellers, I'm waiting for like that superstar dev towards the back end here. There it is. A safety from the Patriots. 23 superstar, Junior Beckwith. Fourth and two sevenths as well. The Rams are offering the linebacker Christian White. You could argue who you'd rather go with. White's a year older, but three points better. Seahawks are offering us that other safety. Defensive tackle Chris Marshall from the Steelers. Now, we did just bring in a really good young defensive tackle from Seattle. But, man, if you put that guy and Marshall next to one another and keep Chest Williams on the defensive line, our defensive line will be still practically unstoppable. So that is a very, very intriguing offer from Pittsburgh. It's a very intriguing offer from the Rams as well. And then the uh, safety, Junior Beckwith, from the, uh, from the Patriots. Again, Marshall's 26. Superstar 85. Hmm. The song was in a FIFA soundtrack, by the way, a few years ago. That's all. Like, that safety's not... I Honestly, I, I'm leaning towards Marshall here. I need to know a little bit more. Again, Williams only wants a one-year deal, so I'm willing to move on from him. Chris Marshall... What is your contract status at 26? Two years left, but not willing to stay more than likely afterwards without having to be heavily overpaid. But he can be a little bit influenced by money, but he wants to be on a team that's in a Super Bowl chase. 2028 Defensive Rookie of the Year. Former Pro Bowler. So, I mean, two years with them before we'd really have to be concerned about whether or not he stays. What is the deal for the Patriots safety junior Beckwith? 
What is the deal for Beckwith? Second year pro. Willing to stay. Willing to stay. As long as we have a mentor in that position. I think we're going to go with the Patriots deal instead. Two years, he's cheaper, which is good. We're going to need cheaper options for the cap penalties we might take on. Uh, we're going to trade guard Jay Williams to the Patriots for young safety junior Beckwith. Although that might mean that we immediately do have to trade one of our other safeties that we weren't quite planning on getting rid of right now. But then it would be the linebacker from the Rams, but the linebacker from the Rams would fit in pretty well. I do have to check that linebacker. Right now, that Steelers offer is very enticing, but a bit scary because that guy might not want to stay. Christian White, six foot five linebacker. One year left on his deal, willing to stay afterwards, though. Ninth overall pick in 2030. I think I'm going to go with Christian White because that way we don't have to move a, a safety right now. Because we got the two middle linebackers. We got Fowler on the right. Get this guy on the left. Our defense is actually still going to be pretty damn good. We're going to send Jay Williams to the Rams. It is a done deal. Williams is on the outs. What about Bryson Cook at right tackle? Is there anything decent for him? He was on the fringe as to whether or not he'd be willing to stay. But we are shuffling the deck chairs here. We're freeing up a good amount of cap room, too. Obviously, there might end up being some cap penalties. We'll see what the hell happens. Uh, but Bryson Cook at 28. Is there anything decent for you? That tight end that the Bears also offered from Malone. Hood's 30. That doesn't help. Forbes is 31. So veteran Jalen Waddle, Jordan Davis. If we pair Bryson Cook with Malone, then maybe it'll work. I do want to check the other expiring deal in the form of Jeremiah Proctor. Any good dev patterns here? Not really. So these last three guys, we're not going to be looking at too much. Cap penalties are going to hurt, but at the same time, again, uh, we're going to be able to survive it. If I pair these three together, a lot of cap we'd be moving out right now. <laughs> we could get the guy that fucking torched us in the Super Bowl, Deshaun Presley from the Bengals. Holy shit. He's only 27. Wow. It's Eric Sharp, Zach Tut, Sean Harrison, Timmy Nelson, a younger guard from Dallas, Timmy Nelson. It's Hairston, too. Jose Fulcher is a defensive end. We do need someone in that position now. Trayvon Walker, but obviously he's older at this point. Our former linebacker, Kentrell Ellington. Max Crosby, no thanks. Hayward, another decent young option. There, there's some options. Ooh. Ooh, wide receiver Jay Wagner. 26 years old, 84 overall. But at the same time, I mean, he'd be in the three spot. Do we need him in the three spot? I mean, Presley, it is true, Presley's a bit better. Same overall, though, and a year older. I don't even know if a wide receiver is exactly what we need, but, I mean, Presley was the only superstar of the group. There were a couple of star dev guys who weren't that bad, which is nice. Uh, but outside of Trayvon Walker, yeah, that guy was the only superstar. So even if it was a trade for Deshaun Presley, 
and then we flip him. It wouldn't be the worst. And again, this guy was insane in the Super Bowl. He'd be willing to stay, but only because of the Super Bowl chase. We could flip him. And presumably he could offer more than these three can get us. All on expiring deals. I think we do it. I think we do it and we just see what Presley can fetch us. So Proctor, Bryson Cook, Daniel Malone. All heading to Cincinnati. As I'm sure the Bengals are still very much looking to win a Super Bowl this year before Joe Burrow retires. I don't think it went through because it kicked me back to this menu. That's normally not a good sign that a trade went through if it kicks you back to that menu. Fucking pain in the ass. Let me guess. Presley's not here. No, okay. It did go through. So, um... It does make sense to try to flip Presley immediately. The question is, what can we get for him? And then we could flip him for Jamichael Carmichael. It was all a part of our master plan to get Jamichael Carmichael. The best name. Um, I actually can't get as much for this guy as I would have expected. He doesn't have to immediately be traded. But I thought for sure there might be something better, and there's not. So I think we're going to hold on to Deshaun, at least for now. Again, doesn't have to immediately be traded. So the big question is, who the fuck plays quarterback for us for the rest of this season? Josh Leach is now the starter in Chicago. Interesting. Um, is there a team with two quarterbacks where maybe we snag somebody and then still go for it? Otherwise, the free agent list. Danny, that's the, that's the one. The Bengals were willing to trade him. Ooh, ooh, Cameron Harden. Hello. They haven't really given this guy a chance yet because of Anthony Richardson. I wonder what they want for him. Former Pitt quarterback has the same face as the guy we just got rid of. Is not going to want to stay. <laughs> he was the second overall pick in 2029. But scheme fit, I can change that. And I can get him a mentor. All right, let's uh, let's remember let's remember Indy. Is there another team? Wow, Justin Fields now in uh, Washington. Is there another team? Hello, Andy Shelley, behind Kurt Slater in Miami. Indy, I'd say, is still the preferred one. Uh, Philly has Logan Verdon. <laughs> Paul Johnson's finally the starter in Atlanta. Uh, former Giants quarterback Will Hawley, but he's 27. Is there another team? Tua now the guy for the uh, Vegas Raiders. Interesting. Rams got Brian Pagan. So far, it is Indy that's the most interesting one, easily. In saying that, Owen Backus left for left Washington for New Orleans, and they have Chris Mays and Tyler Flores. That would be the team, to say the least. Poor Chris Mays, but he's already 27. I hate that. And then Mitch Glenn behind him. Honestly? The NHL, the main league of all. Yes, but at the same time, I've been a football fan my whole life. So I've been a general sports fan my entire life. Sammy Stevenson. Desmond Ritter now the backup in Tennessee. 
I mean, Indy, in terms of like shortcutting our way to getting a younger quarterback to build around, they have the guy with Cameron Hart, my NHL team. I am a Boston sports fan across the board, which might ruin your opinion of me. We'll see. Um, two firsts and a fifth. Neither of the firsts are ours. Or like our main one. Oh, boy. Ooh. Ooh, though. Now, we take a big cap hit on Bart Flowers, but he is 28. And then obviously Cameron Walton's near and dear to my heart. Old fart blowers, as he's been deemed. That's not a bad option. Miami was offering Shelly, who is, and let me double check this, 24, 80 overall star. The Eagles had Verdon, who was 25. Yeah, so Philly's out. Miami would be more interesting. The Rams had Pagan, a year younger, four points worse than the other guy in Miami. Not ideal. The Saints have Mays, who is 27, but isn't bad. Say the least. Do running backs regress realistically? Ah, that's a tough call. I mean, I'd say probably not. Still probably not. And then the Seahawks have Glenn. So the other good younger option would be from Miami, and it would be Andy Shelley. It is true that we could try and draft our own, and I still think we could. But at the same time, Tyus Griffin, a first, Sheldon Steele. All right. At the same time, man, if we get a quarterback, our team is still half decent. I'm just saying, realistically, we could maybe still go on a run this year. That is a possibility. What would the deal for Chris Mays be? Well, New Orleans is out of their fucking mind. And then Seattle, who obviously we've done business with. by moving Dennis Payne there. If I were to take Mitch Glenn off your hands here. Okay. It would be expensive. It would be expensive no matter what. And the argument becomes, can we get a quarterback in the draft who is better than the guy that we could acquire from Indy? Jake, what's up? <laughs> Good to see you. We're doing well. Oops, wrong one. Quarterback, C.J. Dobson's the best guy we could get out there. And there isn't. Hello? There aren't any like younger guys to build around right now. They've all. I mean, granted, they're probably practice squad steals, but I turned that off. So. We take a look at the team. We look at the whole players ready to negotiate. Or what has been an insane deadline. We did trade Payne. Two firsts and a superstar defensive tackle. X-Factor defensive tackle. So Chess still has to come back. We gotta resign Dalton. Outside of that, it's nothing too crazy. Brian Shepard's our current starter. It's showing us with $96 million in cap room for next season. Technically, we'll have more. Macklin and White will both have to pick up the fifth year option for, which is okay. I double check the draft picks that we have. The first rounders this year, there's three of them. Ours is the 25th. I honestly think saving those to maybe trade up for a QB. Can I look at the scouting? We do know there were some quarterbacks towards the top. 
I'm just trying to think, like, is it worth getting that guy from the Colts or is it worth going after one of the quarterbacks here? I mean, Logan Gibbs is the guy if we were to go for one. Also, Gary Neal a bit later on. I am a Patriots fan, immortal as well. 22-year-old scrambler out of South Carolina. Obviously, those haven't happened yet. Big Nate, what's going on? I mean, this guy certainly looks promising. Play action's not very good. We don't know enough about him. K-Town as well, what's going on? It's a pocket passer, though. He does look pretty solid. The biggest of Nates, indeed. That's the question. Do we bank... On landing a Logan Gibbs. Or do we pull off the big trade for that Colts quarterback that they have sitting behind Anthony Richardson? That is the big decision to make right now. Again, it would be friggin' expensive to land him. But he's all he's 25 superstar to 79. The fact that he's 25 does kind of suck. Is both a possibility? No, because of the return that they'd want for him. Well, actually, that's not true. It could technically happen because they want Walton or Flowers, and we could still save the first. Mm. I'm just trying to walk through this. Shout out to the Flash for the follow, by the way. Okay, this guy's awareness is terrible. His accuracies aren't great. At 25, I don't think he, I don't think that's the guy to be like, yeah, let's salvage our season. I don't think it is. I think we look for the draft. I believe in Mac Jones. <laughs> I'm trying to stay optimistic. I am. Um... It's the funny thing, though, as a Patriots fan now, like, I, I just, what am I going to do? Complain? Oh, no, they're not good anymore. Like, as if people are going to have sympathy. What would it cost to bring Slater back? Could you imagine? For shits and gigs. Shout out to Link on the one year off of the primer, no less. Link, thank you for that. Welcome back. How the heck are you? I hope you're good. I hope you're well. For shats and giggles, if we were to bring back who we thought was going to be our guy, they don't want to trade him. <laughs> they don't want to trade him. Okay. I think the deadline madness is done. Uh, needless to say, uh, there was some damage here. But we realized at 4-3, and three, it was worth Blowing it up as opposed to trying to keep it going. So a reminder of what we have done. Oh, the Bears had just acquired Jackson McMillan, too. A reminder of what we had done. We gave up a couple of draft picks for a third round pick from the Niners. Uh, we then acquired a superstar X-Factor defensive tackle in Sheldon Steele for Dennis Payne, who was going to take up so much of our cap space to keep. It just wasn't worth it. But Dennis Payne is gone. We brought in Damian Johnson for Forrest Harris, who was going to leave as well. Christian White for Jay Williams on the O-line. We traded Proctor, Cook, and Malone for Presley, the receiver that fucking murdered us in the Super Bowl. Massive, massive changes because, simply put, it didn't look worth the risk to give it the extra run at 4-3. and three. It's kind of a rebuild on the fly, but maybe something will still happen this season.